Hi everybody, this is Q here at Q Aquatic. And there's no waterfall right now. So I've been having to put a lot of water in here every day, sometimes twice a day. And I'm trying to see if it's evaporation just from regular waterfall. Is there a hole in there? So the first thing I did is turn off the waterfall. And I've got two filters running, two little filters, but it's keeping the water moving in that solar one, which is pretty useless, but when you have nothing, it's counting. <laughs> and I'm measuring the water line. And I'm gonna see if the water's going down still pretty at a, at a good clip, then I'll know it's something else. But if the water line doesn't go down, I mean, within a day and a half, it goes down to where the pump stops working. So I'm thinking either I have a leak there or my waterfall is just too drastic. And from, and it would've been very, very hot, but from the time it starts up here and spatters everywhere, the evaporation weight is more than the pond can handle. Or I have a leak. So as you can see why I'm trying everything else before the, oh, I might have a leak. So this isn't gonna tell me whether I have a leak or not because I could have a leak in the liner right behind that rock. So all this is gonna tell me if it's in the waterfall area, which I would rather tear down and set up the waterfall than tear up the pond. So. So the average evaporation, on average for most water features will be about a half an half a percent to one percent of the gallons as pump per hour in the day. And then I believe one inch of my pond equates to about 55 or 60 gallons after taking length times width divided by 231. And just to test my math, I added 55 gallons of water from a 55 gallon tank and it did equal one inch of my pond. So let me show you the filters. So I took this out of one of my summer tubs this is a big square foam. It goes down about six inches with bio balls. So that's over here moving around the water on this side. It's not a filter, but it's a little solar operated fountain that keeps the water moving here. Oh, look at all the mosquito fish fry. Oh, that's awesome. And then over here, lying on almost on its side, is a fountain but on the bottom of the fountain is a little filter and it should not be falling over you will see if i can stand this upright to get a better waterfall water flow here we go not much but it's a little bit better how am i going to get that can i move these over to push it over there we go so it, it's just rippling the water but it is filtering too. So I got a couple small filters and a water movement going on. I gotta say it's pretty quiet by the pond without the waterfall. It's almost sad but I still love the pond and I know it's temporary. I'm just trying to problem solve. With that turned off and using a rock as a gauge to how much water you're losing is not very effective because I'm noticing there's wicking there's false reading. So what I did, since my kids are in the vinyl business, I put a vinyl thing on the, the skimmer because we were thinking we were losing about an inch of water, which would equate to it's about 55 gallons. And in a 24 hour period, it is not losing hardly anything, not even an eighth of an inch which would equate to the evaporation rate of 1%. Okay, so now comes the next part. So after all that testing and all that work, I'm just gonna fill up the pond as needed and not worry about it. <laughs> because I, I got lost in the equation. It might just be possible that my pump is too big for the skimmer, which is why it's always, the pump is always you know, drying it up. 
I think if my skimmer was a foot deeper, mm -hmm. I would not have any issues. Just a thought. So thanks for checking out my video, guys. See you next time.